Hello and welcome to ED Insight, where we get you a 360 degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I'm Sridhar Ramakrishnan and here's what we have for you on the show today. India's aviation industry is spinning out of control with losses of nearly 12,000 crore rupees. So just how bad is the situation and what can save the airlines? And an exclusive interview with Aviation Minister Ajit Singh on the government's view of the crisis and the solution. It should worry everyone. Our top story first. India is one of the fastest growing aviation markets in the world, yet its airlines are deep in the red. Almost all carriers, except Indigo, are loss-making and the so-called full-service carriers are saddled with nearly 60,000 crore rupees of debt. With fuel prices rising and the government keeping a close eye on fares, India's airlines are caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. Nikhil Shivadas has more. A few years ago, the government gave wings to India's aviation sector by bringing in much-needed reforms. Soon, the Indian skies were busy with a number of private full-service and low-cost carriers who expanded their fleet aggressively to meet the country's growing demand. But all that came to a grinding halt last year. According to Kappa, Indian carriers will together lose $2.5 billion or 12,600 crore rupees in the 12 months ending March 2012. That's nearly 25% of the industry's total revenues of about $10 billion or 52,000 crore rupees. The question is, when you do a 17-18% demand and still make $2.5 billion losses, then you need to, need to basically look within and say, that is it better for me to do 18% growth, not aim for a 20% growth as an industry, but yet make money. According to the Federation of Indian Airlines, fuel accounts for close to 40% of the total operating costs for airlines in India. And the estimated annual fuel bill for the industry is more than 20,000 crore rupees annually. That's because ATF prices rose 50% last year. This, coupled with a 17% depreciation in the rupee, has had a devastating impact on the balance sheet of most carriers. The international price of crude has gone up by about 40-45%. It's now at about $110 a barrel. And the other thing is that the rupee has slid so much. The combination of a weak rupee and a high crude price has increased our operating costs quite a lot. Airlines could have offset these costs with higher ticket prices or other options like the direct import of ATF. Doing so saves them the cost of sales tax. The government is considering the industry's request for direct import of ATF. But the scope for raising fares is limited because the competition in the industry is stiff. Besides which, the aviation regulator DGCA frowns upon fare hikes. At present, airlines cannot pass on rise in cost to consumers beyond a predetermined point. This also means that Indian carriers cannot charge higher fares during peak season to counter losses during leaner months. That's not all. Differential pricing or charging a premium for exit row seats and for additional check-in luggage is not permitted. All this limits an airline scope to make extra bucks. You could look at some um, some incentivization of prices so that you could um, you you could uh, get um, you know extra people flying. But most of the trade that happens to an airline is between two to three days of the departure of the flight, and it is during that time they are unable to increase their prices. So uh, I am not very sure with this cost environment and the overall approach to pricing being still. Uh, still negative from, from most of these carriers because of competition and other issues. Any, any form of pricing which doesn't reflect cost would not help. From pricing woes to a capital crunch, it's well known that aviation is a business that requires deep pockets. India's airline promoters are hardly large enough to absorb the losses in a business that takes years to turn around. So far, they have been borrowing from banks and financial institutions. For instance, Air India has a total debt of nearly 45,000 crore rupees. Jet Airways has a debt of nearly 13,000 crore rupees. While Kingfisher Airlines is still struggling with a 7,000 crore rupee debt. With interest rates rising rapidly last year, the cost of capital has become painfully high. The only way out of this debt trap is raising fresh equity. And that's where FDI comes in. Not just for Kingfisher, but for the entire industry, I strongly believe that foreign direct investment by strategic investors should be permitted. Sectors like uh, telecom and others which were uh, previously thought to be uh, security sensitive sectors, uh, if, if in those sectors FTI could be allowed up to 74%, why could it not be done uh, in aviation? It makes a lot of sense 
uh, giving access to uh, capital, to expertise, and, and opening the potential for you know, the sort of joint ventures uh, with overseas airlines that can offer um, you know, far more choice of, of destination and service to Indian consumers. While FDI in aviation is allowed, foreign carriers are prohibited from investing in their Indian counterparts. Even in more developed nations, there are restrictions on airline ownership. The USA, for example, has limited FDI in aviation to 25% of the voting stock. And Japan and China permit 33% and 35% respectively. Critics argue that Indian carriers are still relatively new and still firming up routes and destinations. They say that foreign players will ignore smaller destinations and only feed their international hubs, potentially denting the domestic aviation industry. That's perhaps why not everyone agrees to the idea of letting foreign players rule the Indian skies. We must take care that uh, through this approach, uh, India doesn't just come uh, a, a market where to buy uh, traffic, uh, but uh, FDI should help uh, to strengthen Indian carriers uh, to, to develop a, a wide network uh, worldwide. We really feel that the longer term opportunity of India must lie with Indian operators. Uh, having said that, you know, we are a very small sort of cog in the wheel and finally we will really honor whatever the government decides. But, but we struggle with the fact that, that the government would entertain change of policy based on the health of some constituents of the, of the industry. Despite these apparent problems, the Indian aviation sector saw a 17% expansion in capacity last year. In the past two years, private players have placed orders for over 400 aircraft of varying sizes. But buying new aircraft is an expensive proposition. Which is why many airlines in India opt to go in for sale and leaseback deals on their aircraft. Simply put, an airline buys aircraft but sells them to a leasing company which in turn leases it back to the airline. For instance, Air India is considering selling seven planes under this arrangement and then lease them back. That will enable the national carrier to reduce an estimated $600 million from its total debt. But sale and leaseback arrangements are a double-edged sword. Airlines benefit because they do not have to factor in the cost of depreciating assets on their books. A disciplined management can use such deals to reduce their debt burden, grow operations and earn more to offset the higher long-term cost of leasing aircraft. But inefficient operations could see such deals ballooning to unmanageable costs in future years. To be able to do a sale and lease back, you need to be able to deploy more aircraft, which only the low-cost airlines can do, which Indigo is doing very successfully. And uh, then you're going to spread it on, on the balance sheet over a period of four or five years. Uh, uh, rather than uh, on, uh, on a, on a, on a upfront uh, basis on the balance sheet. The other issue is the business model followed by airlines. A few years ago, most Indian carriers followed the hub and spoke model, where traffic is routed from one central point. This model maximized revenues but led to lower craft utilization time. As more operators entered the market, passengers per airline dwindled and many switched to the point-to-point -point model, which provides direct flights to and from a city. Here, aircraft utilization is superior, but revenues are lower. Globally, airlines operate with both these models, but in India, airlines follow only one path, raising their business risks. And that's what has impacted Kingfisher Airlines and the national carrier, Nasil. Air India had its hub in Mumbai. All its flights used to originate and terminate in Mumbai. People used to be flown in through spoke flights from Hyderabad, Bangalore, Tiruvannantapuram, Chennai, and name the places onto Mumbai and then put on a flight leaving for Europe and United States. But if a rival airline is offering direct services, a passenger based in Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai or for any other city would naturally prefer a flight from his city to his destination rather than come to Mumbai, which is a hub, and then go onward to his final destination. The industry has learned tough lessons from the rise and fall of Kingfisher Airlines. And now most carriers are concentrating hard on keeping costs to a bare minimum. Indigo's uh, objective, keep your costs cut to the bone, which allow you to provide great fares, which in turn allow you to bring a lot of customers on board, fill your planes up and, and just move on. 90% of the domestic capacity in five years' time, if not shorter, will be in the low-cost medium. 
but regulator DGCA is of the view that this fixation with lower costs may have led to airlines flouting safety standards. If the Kingfisher people were called today, we also called in the Air India Express people. But before that, we had called in the other airlines also, individual. Spice was called in, Indigo was called in, all of them were called in. This process has been going on. So what can be done to improve the sector's flight? Well, as they say, charity begins at home. So aviation companies will first need to look inwards, restructure their operation and cut costs. But that alone might not be nearly enough to pull the sector out of this crisis. Enter aviation reforms. Several airline operators have asked the ministry to ensure a level playing field with international airlines operating in India on bilateral trade agreements. They have also asked for the aviation sector to be granted infrastructure status, which will help it avail lower taxes and hence rationalize costs. If that happens and carriers can raise funds via FDI, the Indian aviation sector could well take wing once again. Indeed. So how exactly does the government plan on implementing this? ET now Supriya Shinet caught up with Civil Aviation Minister Ajit Singh to discuss just that. Stay tuned.